What's going on Babylonians? It's me, Song to Raise, and I'm back with some more Diablo 4 content to bring to you. Now today we're actually going to be discussing, not doing a proper build video because I only want to do proper builds once I get to World Tier 4. And as you can see, I'm only level 55 and just currently sitting in World Tier 3. So we've got a little bit away, but uh, I do have a few ideas in mind, so make sure to keep an eye out on the channel for those. But today I'm actually going to be discussing a really fun and unique kind of like special interaction that happens when you use Malignant Hearts compared to combined with what the rogue can actually bring to the table. Now, to, it's going to be something a little bit different. It's been a little while since I've touched on Penetrating Shot, but honestly, I have been having an absolute blast with this build, and no pun intended, because those blasts you're going to be seeing all over the screen. So what we'll do is we'll discuss the key points about this build, we'll try and keep it short and sweet and then we'll go into the gear and we'll explain what you actually need to be able to get this to pop off. If you do enjoy this type of video, if you want to see more from ourselves then make sure to drop a like and subscribe, it really does help the channel out. We are pushing for that 5k subscriber goal for the end of the year, so anything you can do for us before then would be absolutely appreciated. But with all that said and done, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into the video. Okay, so to be able to discuss this a little bit, we do need to have a quick rerun through over on our skill tree, but we don't need to discuss everything, we actually just need to discuss a few things. So what the main one of the main things we're going to be discussing is going to be the core skill. Now you can get away with whatever core skill you want to be able to do, but for consistency reasons, unless you're going for like uh, proper roles or proper attributes into your gear, which as it currently stands I do not have because I'm constantly increasing and obviously once I get to World Tier 4 is when I'm going to settle on that. Any Anything from World Tier 1 all the way up to World Tier 4, you're going to be great with Penetrating Shot. The reason why is because we are going for that Lucky Hit chance, and Lucky Hits are quite crucial for this build, but it's especially important because we're trying to make it as consistent as possible, and so that we only have to worry about the one roll rather than having to worry about two percentages feeding into each other. So in this case, Penetrating Shot as base has 50% Lucky Hit chance, which overall is pretty decent because everything else is like 20, 16, 33... 10% which is abysmal uh, unless you go, go into some abilities like, like cooldown abilities like for example shadow step which has a hundred percent lucky hit chance penetrating shot's going to be your best uh, base best case scenario because it's going to do a lot of damage it's also going to have that consistency factor this gets amplified even further because in season one we now have it so that combo points will work its way up to increase our lucky hit chance the more points that we have so if we do spend three points we get an extra 30 percent lucky hit chance which if you're not going into any kind of lucky hits or anything like that anything special in the build it's not going to do anything for more for you all it's going to do is just increase the amount of damage that the arrow will be dealing but in this case, what this will take it from 50% is all the way up to 80%, which is huge. Now, this is all about trying to, like I said, get as close to 100% as possible. And obviously, you can see that that only goes up to 80 Well, what we were able to do is by using imbuements and being able to go into this bit in the ultimate skill tree, you can see that if we go into Alchemist Fortune, having three points into that and just using any kind of imbuement, it doesn't have to be ice, but I am using it in this case, is that we can get an extra 15% increased lucky hit chance. This takes us all the way up as long as we are using three combo points and we are using imbuement skill. We now have a 95% in, well, just a 95% lucky hit chance, which is pretty much as guaranteed as, as you probably need it to be. Obviously, you can take a few more points and you could put it in second win just to really push it to that 100%, but I think for 5%, I might as well just try and get a, a roll or two over on my gear, and then that will just push me over to that 100% threshold, meaning that I have that always guaranteed. So this is going to feed into a few things that we do have when it comes to Malignant Hearts. It also feeds into a couple of aspects, but you also need a couple of other skills to be able to have a look at, one of which is actually going to be Caltrops. Caltrops in of itself is absolutely stunning when it comes to this build. Once again, I'm planning to take this into World Tier 4 and then I will do a proper breakdown, proper build video for it, so feel free to keep an eye out for that. But Caltrops once combined with Enhanced and with Methodical, so we now deal cold damage and chill enemies is absolutely stunning. It allows us to be able to set ourselves up ready for cold imbuement and while this combination was already decent it wasn't anywhere near top tier or anything like that in the preseason this then gets amplified by massive amounts once we actually look into the malignant hearts and some of the other kind of uh, like aspects that we can put into our legendary pieces so we'll discuss that very very shortly the last thing that we do need to be able to cover though is actually going to be our key passive and this is where this all kind of comes together as well so we do have exposure we're on a lucky hit dealing damage to an enemy affected by 
by trap skill has up to a 25% chance to reduce the active cooldown of your trap skills by 20% and also drop a cluster of exploding stun grenades that deal so much damage uh, and then also stun enemies for 0.5 seconds. This is insane for crowd control. This is amazing to be able to keep enemies off your back. Honestly, this build just has uh, like crowd control. It has mobbing in spades. It's genuinely insane and it does it all without shadow imbuance. It doesn't need it because we're able to get explosions from other methods. So the main idea to be able to get this to work is we want to get as much like trap skills down as possible so that enemies are pretty much always kind of like considered as they are affected by a trap skill. This is kind of done through a poison trap which obviously is a fairly small radius in of itself but we do look to enhance this further through the paragon tree so we'll cover that next. But essentially we want to use poison trap to lure enemies into an area. We then want cow traps to be littered here there and everywhere uh, so that enemies can walk into it get affected by chill and then everything else will then work on top of that with the aspects and with the paragon tree so that's the base or basics or the like the general idea as to the skill tree a couple of skills thrown in there and the key passive so you can keep that in the back of your mind while we talk about the rest of the build the last thing we do need to cover is the paragon tree uh, and we just want to cover one specific glyph in this case and this is actually going to be the one i have socketed here which is snare uh, how this kind of works is that we get increased trap skill damage but we're not too interested in that side of things i mean it is kind of nice to have increased poison damage it is kind of nice to have increased cow traps damage but the real reason we want it is to be able to have that increased radius now this won't affect death trap, so it is going to purely be a case of being able to affect cow traps as well as poison trap, uh, and this means that we have a 25% increase radius. This is absolutely huge when we have a look at cow traps, especially basically littering like a huge area, and it just means that enemies can walk into this, and as soon as they touch that area, as soon as they become chilled, they are now going to be affected by that exposure key passive, meaning that we're now going to be there having the chance to be able to uh, like drop some stun grenades on top of them, but also reduce the cooldowns of our cow traps as well as our poison traps and uh, it's just insane the, the, the synergy there is just like so good and i honestly lo absolutely love it so we've got that all in mind so let's have a look into the gear to be able to explain why this is all working now it does work off a couple of things in, in uh, the gear right here and then we'll have a look into the jewelry to explain why it's kind of working the way it is so we do have it so we've got with the umbrus we've got ways to on lucky hits we've got ways to get dark shrouds this is overall really really nice it does mean that if we do get up to 100 percent lucky hit chance uh, every single time we cast our penetrating shot as long as we're doing a critical strike we have a up to a 40 to 60 percent chance to get a free dark shroud given us some nice damage reduction overall creating pretty nice but the reason why we kind of gone into uh like all the trap skills the reason why we've gone into cow traps so to be able to do cold damage and the main reason why we've gone into cold imbuement is because of frostbitten frostbitten in of itself was a decent aspect originally in the pre-season you had to build around it uh, even if you didn't use any grenade skills on chilled enemies it was also really nice to have that extra critical strike damage against frozen enemies because you do have things in terms of like your uh, like your skill tree with cold imbue uh, where we've got frigid finesse where we deal even more damage against enemies that were frozen or chilled and um, if you do go into the cold imbue all the way down to mixed we deal even more damage to crowd control as well as uh, double this bonus against frozen enemies uh, so cold imbuement had the chance to be able to do some insane damage potential but trying to freeze enemies was kind of a pain to be honest with you now you could use frostbitten and it did mean that you had to use multiple skills to be able to get it there but we don't need to do that anymore which is where the consistency of this all comes in. So how this works is that chilled enemies hit by your grenade skills have a chance equal to double your critical strike chance to be instantly frozen for two seconds. This gives you a short window of being able to instantly just decimate with cold imbuement to be able to do massive amounts of damage and everything that we're going to be throwing out is going to be doing crowd control so that obviously filters in on that as well. So why is Frostbitten so good now? Well, it's because we're able to throw out so many grenades that we have basically have almost like a guaranteed way to instantly freeze enemies, especially mobs, and it's just going to like just absolutely daft the explosions you'll see on screen. This is kind of compounded because we can go into Tricksters uh, because Caltrops as a, a skill now can actually instantly freeze enemies if you're lucky enough because Caltrops will throw a cluster of exploding stun grenades, dealing so much physical damage and stunning enemies, but because it's, it's in white, because it's treated as stun grenades it means that it's actually kind of working as if it's a skill meaning that it has a chance because the cold damage goes down first because it's an area of effect the stun grenades then travel and because of that short window where the cold actually applies first and then the grenades land it then has that chance to be able to instantly freeze enemies 
This works amazingly with Frigid Finesse just by itself because that's a guaranteed 30% increased damage multiplier right there and then. And it's just, it just gives you nice consistency. It gives you a massive amount of DPS. It really lets you take control of all of those kind of like multipliers that can exist in the build. But obviously this set gets compounded with Cold Imbuements because you're able to then do an extra 40% on top of that because how we've gone into uh, Mixed to be able to do even more damage. But what if I told you it got even sillier because we have ways to be able to drop even more stun grenades so we have even more chances to be able to instantly freeze enemies and also do even more damage on top of that. Well, that's where the Vicious Heart that you can see socketed into this ring kind of comes in. We're on a lucky hit, we have up to a 20% chance to launch 5 stun grenades. Now, this number can vary. You can get, I think, as low as 2, if I remember right, uh, or the lowest I've seen is 2. But you want as many stun grenades as possible so you deal even more damage, but always gives you more chances to be able to uh, like affect as many enemies as possible with the stun, but also then you know to be able to proc off the extra Frozen, because uh, each one of those is going to have the same chance of equal to double your, uh, your stun your uh, critical strike chance to instantly freeze those enemies uh, so you want to have as many as possible in there the damage is kind of irrespective so you definitely want to go for that uh, but five stun grenades that deal so much damage uh, physical damage and stun enemies for 0.5 seconds so okay we've got caltrops chucking grenades we've got the the, uh, the vicious heart we've got our um, malignant hearts here being able to chuck extra stun grenades as well uh, we are just basically dropping grenades left right and center well obviously this then gets if we go back to the skill tree this gets even sillier because because uh, caltrops is treated as a trap skill we have a chance of being able to drop another cluster of stun grenades to be able to do even more damage on top of that and keep in mind that all of these stun grenades because they are doing stun they also apply to uh, the stagger effect on bosses which means you can easily start ramping your way all the way up to instantly stagger bosses to be able to do even more damage because they're going to be like stunned they're not going to be able to do anything and then all that crowd control multipliers kind of come into effect for the rest of your build so you do even more damage within that short time frame and that window. So what else can we pick up to be able to increase the lethality of all this? Because obviously this is great, this means that we're going to be stunning enemies, we're going to be freezing them, uh, we're going to be dropping so many grenades, it's just insane, so this is going to help us out with like, show, like similar to like how Shadow Imbuement kind of works with their AoE effect damage. So what else can we use to be able to help us out here? Well, because we are using Poison Trap, which is going to be uh, one of our subterfuge skills, we can go for one of the Blue Hearts, which is the Brutal Heart, where we can leave behind a Shadow Decoy Trap that taunts enemies. This shadow decoy is brilliant because how it all kind of works or how I've uh, found it works really really well in my experience is I can pop down a poison trap this would then start drawing aggro from enemies that are within my range. They will all go towards this decoy. And then because they're all funneling in, because they're all filtering in, I can then activate a Caltrops so that they all get affected at the same time. They all get hit by the cold. They all get affected by the stun grenades. And they all have a chance to be instantly frozen, which allows me to then finish it off with a cold imbued fused trick shot, uh, kind of like shot with our uh, penetrating shot. So this is just insane. It's amazing mobbing. And it does have a little bit of a combo. You do get used to it over time so don't worry too much about that if, if it sounds a little bit daunting it will make sense when you're in the fight but it's overall it's effective it's insane and it just basically freezes everyone on the screen you will barely be touched now of course you can take this one step further if you are looking to be able to use that cold imbuement to do even more damage because critical strike damage is kind of insane for the rogue what you can do is grab another vicious heart and when you gain increased critical strike damage but your non-critical strikes deal less damage because this multiplier for your critical strike damage is so high you will instantly just detonate like elite i've managed to one shot elites in some cases with the right setup i've managed to uh, just absolutely decimate a whole mob with this Honestly, being able to grab this heart and this ring, this heart kind of combination is just insanely good. Now, I am thinking of potentially swapping out the Brutal Heart. Uh, I do really enjoy the, de the decoy. I think it's really, really nice. But I think I could probably put something in there to help me out against, like, bosses. Because I think that's where this build kind of falls down. It still does plenty of damage. It still does ridiculous amounts of stagger. It's insane, but it's not the fastest thing in the world. And I would like to be able to improve that going forward. But anyway, that's the interaction that I'm currently looking. That's the basis of what this current build that I am using. And honestly, I'm having so much fun and I just wanted to share it out to the community so they can one, see that we are still going with Diablo 4, but also at the same time, they can also have a tryout themselves in case they have picked up a Rogue 4 Season 1. 
Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. And their names appear at the end of every single one of our videos. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to help the channel out and be able to get to that 5k sub goal. But let me know in the comment section down below what do you think of this interaction and what's your favourite interaction with using the Malignant Hearts when it comes to Season 1. It doesn't have to be rogue specific, but I would love to be able to hear your feedback down in the comment section below. But anyway, that pretty much wraps it up, so that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on our next video.